Well, uh, I'm going to start with the iNaturalist uh, stuff that I've seen. And what I did was go through some of the recent stuff that's come up to show some of the edibles that are out, uh, since I know lots of people are interested in that, to see what it is that you might be looking for. And here's one that I excite I was excited to see, which is Shaggy Mane. I have not, I hardly ever find this. And it is one of my favorite mushrooms because it makes uh, great soup. And, um, and so this was uh, picked up on iNaturalist. There are a, a number of other um, coprinus and coprinellus type uh, mushrooms that might look like this. But what is distinctive for me about this is that all those other mushrooms are relatively short. And um, the uh, shaggy mane is a tall mushroom. It will come out in cold, um, in a cold, rainy weather. And I don't think we've really had that kind of weather. And I think this was found up by Gaithersburg. Um, so I'm kind of surprised uh, that it's out, but it's uh, nice to see that it's around. Next thing is there has been uh, a number of people finding um, cauliflower mushrooms. Uh, Sporacis spatulata is called the Eastern cauliflower mushroom. A lot of people like this. This looks like a very clean, let me see if I can zoom in on this, a very clean version of it. Um, often this will get quite dirty and it's hard to clean. Um, but with all this rain, um, and but not very hard rain, you might buy, find some very nice ones out in the woods. Um, people like to stir fry that mushroom. Um, this is one of the more common puffballs that are out, and I'm finding some of these myself. This is um, called the Calvatia cyaniformis. Um, it's sort of skull-shaped. Um, there's another one um, which is called craniformis, which can look very similar. But what's uh, unique about this one is that the, when the spores uh, turn darker, it's no longer white and you can't eat it. But when the spores turn darker, it's purple on the inside. And to me, the indicator of this puffball when I find it, it is kind of shaped like a big muffin sitting in somebody's yard. And uh, if you like puffballs, this is uh, one you're likely to find. It's not going to be as huge as the uh, gigantic puffball that, that April was showing us, uh, but it's, it's quite enough for one person. They're usually quite big. Um, here's one that um, I wanted to show you before I showed you a, um, uh, an edible similar mushroom. You probably all know the chlorophyllum molybdates the green uh, spored parasol mushroom. And it, um, one of the things you notice here is it's got a lot of ornamentation on the top of this one, but it, but they are quite variable. And I found some in the last week or so that were almost pure white. Um, and uh, one of the things you're looking for, if the spores have not turned green yet, and this is one that has not, is a um, pretty unusual um, a ring uh, that uh, uh, is that will remain on it and be very prominent. Similar to that mushroom is the macro, uh, macro lepiota, and there are several different kinds of these. They're commonly called parasol mushrooms. Um, I think we found one um, recently that we did a DNA sequence on. It had been included in the scientific paper um, of a new named species of macrolepiota or parasol mushroom. And so um, if you find some of these, it may be somewhat hard to identify exactly which one it is, but this seems to be the most common one, the Massalenta. If you um, uh, do find them, though, I would encourage you to preserve what you're finding for uh, the DNA committee and try to sequence it to see what different ones we have around here. Um, I also wanted to show you this mushroom because I'm going to show you some pictures of the edible um, uh, Agaricus campestris, which is very much like the button mushroom. There are um, a number of uh, Agaricus mushrooms which uh, will 
upset your stomach at the very least and probably taste bad too. They typically have a phenol odor and this is one of the most common ones that I see, um, which is, um, it's kind of dark on the top. It's called the um, inky mushroom, Plachomyces. Um, like other um, uh, uh, um, agaricus mushrooms and the ones that you want to eat, they will start out pink on the gills, but they have a somewhat different, um, almost felty uh, uh, a partial veil on the underneath. And ultimately they will turn dark brown, just like any other agaricus mushroom. And so what you need to do is crush the bottom of these and smell them, see if it smells like chemical and um, cut them open and see if they, um, see if it has uh, kind of a yellowish color at the bottom. The, um, there's a lot of chicken mushroom out. And what I wanted to show you is the variation in these chicken mushrooms um, as they get older. And on the top left-hand corner is what I think of as the best uh, form of the mushroom. When it's first coming out, it'll be soft like tofu. Um, if you wait a little bit longer, it will get lot, much larger and spread out and flatten out, and it's going to be pretty tough and woody. Um, and that's true for both this one and the Cincinnatus, which grows on the ground and, and the sulfurous on trees. Um, and when I find this, it's really just the outside edge of this, which um, uh, is going to be good to eat. And then if you see this, which looks like a pile of chalk on the top of a, a wood, what you need to do is take a picture of that and come back next year. Uh, what happens is these turn pure white and look like a pile of chalk on the top, uh, uh, on a log. And all you have to do is remember it because it's going to come back for a couple of years afterwards. Um, I tried uh, the, the thin strips I was taking off of this one last week and made uh, chicken satay out of it, and I thought it was pretty good. Here's uh, two different kinds of um, hericium mushrooms, lion mane mushrooms. There's uh, This is the more typical one, which has spines, and they can get quite large. I probably found two or three pounds of it a couple of days ago. And then this one, which was a much smaller one, but it's a really pretty one, is the Coraloides, uh, also known as the uh, Americanum, um, which has, and there's really two different varieties of that as well, but they look similar, more snow-like than snowball-like, and you're probably going to see those out. Mitch did comment to me that he was seeing um, a lot more people finding these earlier in the season. He and I both, when we first started finding these, it was really kind of late in the fall when you'd really get some cold weather. And he was speculating that we might be seeing some escaped versions of this now because it had been so become so common to be able to purchase this mushroom um, that and that those escaped versions have been bred to be um, uh, to fruit uh, earlier than the wild versions do. And so I you know given the warmth of the weather, I was surprised to find as much as I found in the last week or so of this two or three different places. You all have probably seen these around. You might get very excited about it uh, because it looks like an awful lot of mushrooms. Um, this is the um, ringless honey mushroom. Uh, it'll grow in clusters. You often see multiple clusters in people's front yard. Um, and uh, you got to flip it over to make sure uh, what you're dealing with. This is uh, pretty typical of the way it's going to look, uh, all uh, cespitose at the bottom, uh, no ring. In my experience, quite often, this portion here is kind of turning a greenish color. Um, and this is what it looks like when it's young. As it gets older, it will come out and it'll be sort of ruffled on the edges. And uh, there were a couple of instances this year, which I had never seen before, is people found uh, this mushroom in a uh, albino uh, type um, uh, appearance, 
uh, pure white. And I'm not really, uh, we've preserved one of those to, to uh, do sequencing on to see if it's something different. Uh, but I, it might be simply sun bleached or too much rain. Um, but I, I thought it was unusual. And if you do find that um, in this kind of white version, it still might be a, a honey mushroom. Um, this is something that I had never found before and I found this year and I also saw that it came up on iNaturalist, which is called the sweet bread mushroom, uh, Clytopolis runulus. And um, the, the reason it's called sweet bread is that it, uh, you often see in descriptions of mushrooms what they refer to as a farinaceous odor. Farinaceous means that it smells like wet flour or bread dough and uh, some other odors that people pick up from it um, are um, watermelon rind or cucumber. Um, if you find this, um, don't be too quick to eat it because there's a deadly mushroom that looks very similar to this, which is the uh, uh, Dilbata. Uh, I forget the genus name now, but it's um, it's a white mushroom that looks quite similar to this. And the difference is uh, the spore print. Spore print on the Prunalis mushroom will be um, a kind of the salmon pink that you get off of, oh, let's say, uh, 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 maybe an aborted an antiloma mushroom um, or a... Uh, uh, a deer mushroom. Uh, and I might be able to, as we go through this, if I have time, show you a picture of that. But these typically occur out in a field. And the um, other mushroom, uh, the Dilbata mushroom, which is, is deadly poison, um, has a white spore print. So you need to take a spore print and you also need to be careful that all of the ones that you've collected uh, or actually this mushroom. The, uh, the odor will really help you though, because uh, it's, I think, a really striking odor and uh, compared to the mushroom that it might be confused with. So uh, next thing I wanna do is switch to some um, iNaturalist pictures. Let me stop sharing and flip over to the high naturalist pictures. Um, let's see. Try that. In a minute. Where did we go to? Are we? Did that picture change? Nope. We still see your Word document. Oh. Now let me. Try again. Share. And the, oh, I know how I have to do this down here. Um, my cloud. Google. There it is. No, that's still the same one. Um, page 12. Oh, dear me. Sharing is paused. Having trouble getting it to load now. Stop sharing. 
here. Ah. Start. This might be it. Let's try this. I see the thumbnails for all of your pictures. Yeah, that's uh, for some reason. I'm not sure why. I'm ending up, I can't seem to change to the other um, other screen. Well, why don't you quickly yep. go through some of these from what we can see and, and uh, you can keep things well, moving. They, these are the ones I just went through. I can't seem to get Oh, through. okay. Is, are they? I see an old man in the woods. And a... uh, let's see. Stop sharing. And reshare. All right. Let's try this. I see okay. the thumbnails again. But yeah, there's this is not what we just saw. Right. Okay. So um let's see, is this taking up the whole screen or you're only seeing partial partial? No, we're just we're seeing that 18 picture view. Okay. Uh, are you now seeing uh, a single old man of the woods? Nope, still the thumbnails. Hmm. That's okay. We can. I mean, I don't want to spend twenty minutes figuring this. Yeah, out. I know it's this is terrible. Um, why don't we? Um, we'll just continue this next month, I guess. Um. I can't seem to be able to. Or we can do it from the thumbnails. I mean, I don't know what people are watching them, but on my computer screen, I can see the mushrooms. All right. Can you can you see the thumbnails now? Yep. Okay. So I'm highlighting. Yeah. Um, can you see that it's highlighted? Yeah. You know which one I'm talking about. So this is our old man of the woods. We have two different kinds here. Um, this was a, a kind of large specimen. Um, this is an edible mushroom. I hear that it's got a good texture. I don't think it has much flavor, um, but um, if you, it's interesting if you cut it open. It, it unlike a lot of other beliefs, it'll turn blue. This will turn kind of a blackish red, um, which is kind of interesting. Um, <clears throat> I also have some pictures down here that I think is are worth sharing. Um, is Let's see where is it this is um this came out a few weeks ago this typically happens in september as well as in the spring in may is um uh what uh, used to be thought of as a relative of the grifola frondosa but now it's um uh it's got its own genus this is the umbilatus um it used to be called Polyporus umbilatus. I'm forgetting what the genus name is now, but it'll grow in a clump. It gets buggy very quickly. Um, and umbilatus uh, is a little confusing, but it's supposed to kind of the way they're all connected at the bottom is kind of like umbilical an umbilical cord. And they also kind of look like a lot of uh, little umbrellas. Um, uh, so that's uh, and it's a pretty rare mushroom. I only know one uh, one area where I find it around here, um, but uh, there is um, there are a few, and they grow grow at the base of trees like Grifola frondosa. So uh, let's see what else we got here. Oh, this is the uh, wanted to show you the other. Um, uh, green spored lepiota that I had found, which did not have all the ornamentation on the top, but was a pure white mushroom. 
Um, and uh, this picture down here is again showing the very distinctive ring that it has. Um, this is a picture of a couple of um, uh, agaricus mushrooms which fall into the category of what we think of as a agaricus campestris, um, the, the field mushroom, very similar to the button mushroom. Uh, so it's a good edible. Um, these, are, these are pretty robust examples, but there apparently are a lot of different types of these uh, agaricus mushrooms, which are edible. Uh, they're not in the Exanthodermis family that will smell like phenol, uh, but it, they may well be hard to identify. And they're, the smaller ones are, even have their own section called uh, minoras. Um, this is an example. Uh, these two here are examples of um, uh, cordinarius mushrooms. And the reason I'm showing you the picture of this is to illustrate that, that when they're young, they have uh, a purple color and a swollen base that will look a lot like um, uh, the... Um, Phytosophy mushrooms that we find, the uh, um, uh, name is escaping me now, the uh, bluets is the common name for it. And so you have to be careful to take a spore print because a bluet will have kind of a pinkish uh, pale spore print and all of these cortinarias will have a rusty brown spore print. Um, and here's the, this one is showing the top of the cortinarius too. This is a called the silver cortinarius, which has this kind of purplish cast to it, which also make, might, uh, you might uh, be confused and think it's um, a, a bluet mushroom. Um, what else is useful to see here? This one here, you will see out in the woods growing on dead pine. Um, this is called the train wrecker. It's a lentinus mushroom. And the thing that's going to help you identify it, if, if, you, can, if you can see this in the picture, and I don't know how small it is on your screen, but it's got serrated gills that um, uh, is, are very distinctive. And it's a very tough mushroom, though it's edible. My experience has been, uh, it's too tough to eat. These pictures here are um, aborted entolomas. These are the entoloma mushrooms um, growing beside the aborted entolomas. And what the aborted entolomas are attacking are honey mushrooms. And these are the examples of the honey mushrooms that were growing alongside of them as well. And uh, if, if you can see in these pictures, the aborted entolomas have a salmon color spore print, uh, uh, pink spore print, uh, and it's the only one of the entoloma mushrooms that we will eat. My experience, again, is um, they're not that great, and whenever I find these, I prefer to eat the uh, aborted entolomas, which are um, more interesting than the, than the uh, uh, plain aborted en uh, entoloma abortivum which is what this mushroom is called in, in its kind of unaborted state. Um, and then uh, what else is of interest here? This is a, oh, um, This is a um, uh, wine cap mushroom, which again, we typically see in the spring, but it will also occur in this weather in the fall. Um, it has a very distinctive, um, uh, it's called Rugoso annulata is the Latin species name. And it's because it has a very distinctive annulus, which is kind of a cogwheel pattern. And these come up in wood chips and often um, there's a lot of them altogether. Um, and they will come back uh, year after year. If you scoop up some of the wood chips and take them home and put them in your mulch garden, uh, you may, may be able to get some of these in the following year. I've been successful in doing that. 
So I think um, those are all the things I really want